What do all recent super powerful image models like DALI, Imogen or Midjourney have in common? Other than high computing cost, huge training time and shared hype, they are all based on the same mechanism, diffusion. Diffusion models recently achieved state-of-the-art results for most image tasks including text-to-image with DALI, but many other image generation related tasks like image and painting, style transfer or image super resolution. Though there are a few downsides. They work sequentially on the whole image, meaning that both the training and inference times are super expensive. This is why you need hundreds of GPUs to train such a model and why you wait a few minutes to get your results. It's no surprise that only the biggest companies like Google or OpenAI are releasing those models. But what are they? I've covered diffusion models in a couple of videos, which I invite you to check for a better understanding. They are iterative models that take random noise as inputs, which can be conditioned with a text or an image, so it's not completely random. It iteratively learns to remove this noise by learning what parameters the models should apply to this noise to end up with a final image. So the basic diffusion models will take a random noise with the size of the image and learn to apply even further noise until we get back to a real image. This is possible because the model will have access to the real images during training and will be able to learn the right parameters by applying such noise to the image iteratively until it reaches complete noise and is unrecognizable. Then, when we are satisfied with the noise we get from all our images, meaning that they are similar and generate noise from a similar distribution, we are ready to use our model in reverse, and feed it similar noise in the reverse order to expect an image similar to the ones used during training. So the main problem here is that you are working directly with the pixels and large data input like images. Let's see how we can fix this computation issue while keeping the quality of the results the same as shown here compared with DALI. But first, give me a few seconds to introduce you to my friends at Quack sponsoring this video. As you most certainly know, the majority of businesses now report AI and ML adoption in their processes, but complex operations such as model deployment, training, testing, and feature store management seem to stand in the way of progress. ML model deployment is one of the most complex processes. It is such a rigorous process that data scientist teams spend way too much time on solving backend and engineering tasks before being able to push the model into production, something I personally experienced. It also requires very different skill sets, often requiring two different teams working closely together. Fortunately for us, Quack delivers a fully managed platform that unifies ML engineering and data operations, providing agile infrastructure that enables the continuous productization of ML models at scale. You don't have to learn how to do everything end-to-end -end anymore thanks to them. Quack empowers organizations to deliver machine learning models into production at scale. If you want to speed up your model delivery to production, please take a few minutes and click the first link below to check what they offer, as I'm sure it will be worthwhile. Thanks to anyone taking a look and supporting me and my friends at Quack. How can these powerful diffusion models be computationally efficient? by transforming them into latent diffusion models. This means that Robin Rumbach and his colleagues implemented this diffusion approach we just covered within a compressed image representation instead of the image itself and then work to reconstruct the image. So they are not working with the pixel space or regular images anymore. Working in such a compressed space does not only allow for more efficient and faster generations as the data size is much smaller, but also allows for working with different modalities. Since they are encoding the inputs, you can feed it any kind of input like images or text and the model will learn to encode these inputs in the same subspace that the diffusion model will use to generate an image. So yes, just like the clip model, one model will work with text or images to guide generations. The overall model will look like this. You will have your initial image, here X, and encode it into an information dense space called the latent space, or Z. This is very similar to a GAN where you will use an encoder model to take the image and extract the most relevant information about it in a subspace, which you can see as a downsampling task, reducing its size while keeping as much information as possible. You are now in the latent space with your condensed input. 
You then do the same thing with your condition inputs, either text, images or anything else, and merge them with your current image representation using attention, which I described in another video. This attention mechanism will learn the best way to combine the input and conditioning inputs in this latent space, adding attention, a transformer feature, to diffusion models. These merged inputs are now your initial noise for the diffusion process. Then, you have the same diffusion model I covered in my image and video, but still in this subspace. Finally, you reconstruct the image using a decoder, which you can see as the reverse step of your initial encoder, taking this modified and denoised input in the latent space to construct a final high-resolution image, basically upsampling your results. And voila! This is how you can use diffusion models for a wide variety of tasks like super resolution, in painting, and even text to image with the recent stable diffusion open sourced model through the conditioning process while being much more efficient and allowing you to run them on your GPUs instead of requiring hundreds of them. You heard that right. For all devs out there wanting to have their own text-to-image and image synthesis model running on their own GPUs, the code is available with pre-trained models. All the links are below. If you do use the model, please share your tests, IDs and results or any feedback you have with me. I'd love to chat about that. Of course, this was just an overview of the latent diffusion model and I invite you to read their great paper linked below as well to learn more about the model and approach. Huge thanks to my friends at Quack for sponsoring this video and even bigger thanks to you for watching the whole video. I will see you next week with another amazing paper.